Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin soon. We're just going to wait for a few more people to arrive, and Edward will begin his presentation. These are volatile times for energy. Prices are fluctuating. Demand is changing. And pressure is building to create more sustainable ways of designing, engineering, and operating assets. The world is evolving. And data can help you become more resilient. Take BP's oil and gas downstream business, where data drives decision making. Here, supply chain management has been streamlined with cloud-based analytics that gives every team the same real-time information. With fast, accurate data, running hundreds of scenarios now takes minutes, not hours. And purchase decisions have been cut from two days to less than two hours. The team can now quickly optimize in response to the market, reducing waste, improving margins, and boosting profitability. It's a similar story in Finland, where optimization is helping Neste meet its target of becoming carbon neutral by 2035. As the world's largest producer of renewable diesel and jet fuel, the team is always searching for ways to work more sustainably. But with multiple sites and more than 80 process units, cross-business coordination was complicated. We introduced a Viva unified supply chain in the cloud enabling the team to use data intelligence and analytics to make fast decisions from anywhere. Now, production can be optimized automatically, while model building, decision support, and production planning all takes place in one digital space. As a result, efficiency is up and waste is down. 
getting Neste closer to their target and helping them shape the future of energy. Start your digital transformation at Aviva.com. All right, good morning, and thank you for joining our webinar today, hosted by One Hour Canada East. But before I get into our topic of discussion on how to unify our data, I want to talk a little bit about Aviva first and how Aviva creates industrial software that inspires people to shape the future for their operations. We work with our customers and harness the power of our ecosystem to deliver solutions and expertise to optimize engineering, operations, and performance. From water and energy to food and infrastructure, our solutions transform opportunity into business value. So I'd like to quickly introduce myself as your host for today's journey. My name is Edward Longpeneff. I'm a pre-sales consultant here at Aviva covering for all the Americas for the monitoring and controls business unit. And today we're gonna to talk about how we can unify your data. But before we start, I'd like to take a look at some statistics and general direction on where we see the market move against. McKinsey ran an executive survey of senior executives on how they have accelerated their adoption of digital models during the COVID-19 pandemic. The findings are remarkable. They show an unprecedented acceleration in digital transformation. Remote working has increased by an acceleration factor of 43. The use of advanced technologies within operations has increased by a factor of 25. And this is the kind of change we've never experienced before. As Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft has said, we've seen two years of digital acceleration crammed into a year. And there's no sign that things are slowing down yet. In fact, if you look at historical events, they're followed by prolonged periods of innovation and growth. So we are expecting this digital acceleration to continue. And this is one of the many reasons we're excited to, be, excited to be looking forward to 2021 and onwards. But before I continue on to our next conversation or topic, Alicia, can you help us out with a poll today and see and ask the audience, is this the sort of conditions happening within their own environments today? So we're gonna give you a couple seconds to, to answer the polls. So do you agree with these statements from Sati and Nadella? Is the digital acceleration happening at your facility? And uh, showing, from, showing from there, so good. Let's see if we can get the audience to get going up. I know it's early morning right now. So if you have any, if you uh, wanna get some participation going on, that'll be really good. So it's great. So we had uh, a couple people answering, so this is good. And we'll get things going again before we continue on. Perfect. So it looks like everybody's agreeing to sort of the statements seeing on the board. That's really great. So we'll continue onwards and end the polling here. So next, as we all know, industries are rapidly digitizing. So how does this fit with our vision at Aviva, which is to lead and support the digital transformation of industries across the world? Well, four key areas have emerged as business imperatives for the new normal. As capital investments reduce, companies need to reevaluate for viability and reduce total install costs. This will require operators and contractors to revisit traditional work processes and information exchange to enable an entirely new way of engineering. With remote teams requiring better context to supervise operations, engineering, and um, collaborate and make decisions, there's a high need for better visualization and contextual analysis of their operating information across the enterprise. As operations become increasingly autonomous, ensuring the reliability and safe operations of critical assets with minimal supervisions become vital. Personnel on the shop floor and in the field will increasingly need work task enablers and aids as deep operating expertise becomes scarce. And finally, in an environment of heightened volatility, and unpredictability on both supply and demand side, companies will need to drive high levels of agility and responsiveness across value change to minimize value leaks, optimize production, and maximize profit opportunities. However, addressing these requirements does not mean a fresh start. In the industrial context, much of the foundational work has already been done within the broad theme of digital transformation. First, 
Industrial IoT has created the opportunity to access unprecedented amounts of data from connected assets. Secondly, with the improvements in connectivity and data security, historical barriers have started to lower and the advantages of cloud deployments have started to be realized. And finally, the management of change within operations have often underestimated its impact on technology adoption and scaling. Oh, sorry, I think we're having some problems with the slides here. Give me one second and I'll stop sharing. You're good now, Edward. Okay, I'm good now? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, and so the progress made in these key areas have created the foundation for the industrial sector to address the imperatives in the new normal there. At the center of our strategy are two key pillars of cloud and AI. Over the past two years, we've aggressively ramped up our portfolio capability in the cloud from operating information analysis and low code application deployment to complex engineering visualization. In the new normal, a shift to the cloud isn't a matter of choice. It's something that must be pursued given the tremendous advantages of deployment and ownership costs. The ability to consume based upon need and removal of localized barriers to allow unprecedented levels of work efficiency and collaboration, turning to AI across every operational task and process, organizations require additional capabilities for inference, prediction, guidance, and adaptation to dynamic conditions. We are already infusing AI in every aspect of our portfolio. We are also increasing the market leading strength in real-time control and information management, visualization and analysis with richer content and capability at the edge. We also continue to add in the rich domain content to our portfolio to support specifics of industries that we serve. To put together these capabilities will enable two key personas for the new normal. The digital twin, which will develop as a comprehensive physical and behavioral description of individual assets and group of assets used to simulate, evaluate, predict, and prescribe. And the connected worker will interact increasingly with the digital twin of the asset using advanced analytical tools and work task enablers to guide activities, assuring efficiency consistently, and most importantly, safety. So where does this journey begin? Well, our journey begins by collaborating and understanding each business requirements. We found that 90% of our engagements were highly successful once we had an alignment and understanding of where our customers wanted to be. It's important for us to have an effective and timely communication channel as good communication saves time, money, and effort. What's obvious for you isn't obvious for others and consistently communicating with key stakeholders not only allows us to be involve subject matter experts in the project, monitor progress, and make informed decisions, but also ensures everybody is on the same page. Throughout our journey, it's essential to keep an ear to the ground and make sure every party has a common goal and is fully aware of all the requirements. And it's collaboration that helps you and us achieve this. When a team has a shorthand with each other and Aviva is involved in your development, your chances for success are higher. And here's a couple of our customer testimonials. You can find a lot more online on YouTube or social media pages. But one of them I'd like to point out is from New Belgium. Aviva software coupled with New Belgium's continuous improvement strategy has increased our packaging line efficiency by 30%, saving them more than $400,000 in previously planned labor expenditures. And this is the type of collaboration that we work with our partners on to deliver business value by efficiency improvements on your assets, as well as saving you costs to run your pieces of equipment. Another success story I'd like to really point out is from Ballard Power Systems. In Ballard Power Systems, we're looking at building a repeatable global model that will allow them to do remote monitoring and optimization of their fuel cells in the field globally. And so what they wanted to do is look at remote diagnostics of their fuel cell problems and implement a transparent solution to report on their contractual obligations regarding fuel cell efficiencies. And so the challenges they, that, that, they found, that they found before going to Aviva was trying to find a simple and easy and user-friendly IoT solution that can handle the data acquisition and high fidelity storage of their uh, data. Also having a system that will allow them to monitor and analyze the data from online and offline sources. And this system needed to be scalable to grow as Ballard fuel systems basically expanded overnight. 
And so as a result, Aviva provided a closed loop system that allowed Baller to visualize and analyze their fuel cell performance across their whole entire operational fleet globally. And they have a great way to store and collect data with a high fidelity on storage into the cloud as well. Their technicians can collaborate and diagnose problems worldwide. And this is a 24 by seven, 365 operation. And this allows them to be more of a global OEM than just a specific uh, section of their systems. So we heard a lot about you know, the market metrics and how Viva works with our partners to deliver value to their operations. But let's take a quick look at how we can create these values to our customers. With the sudden explosion and growth of the internet, uh, industrial internet of things, we've seen a mash of offerings and products that allow for a connected environment. However, with the advent of low cost solutions and offerings comes another issue of unifying all that great information and putting it into context. However, with Aviva in our agnostic approach to integration in the cloud, this closes a lot of barriers and shortens that time to value on many different projects. So let's take a look at some of the common architecture that we see today. And there's three types of architectures that we see today that we talk with a lot of customers on that Aviva solutions can provide data to the cloud and allow for that effective enabling decision-making uh, for users out there. The first architecture that we see is the IoT device to the cloud, which means that new industrial devices that are now equipped with capabilities to send data to the HMI and SCADA systems or using cloud-based IoT protocols. The second is the automation to cloud. And this is where we need to connect or incorporate existing infrastructure using an IoT gateway. This architecture is also valid for greenfield applications because the standard sensor that we get today could be much cheaper than what an IoT sensor is today. And the third one is a corporate multi-site or cloud-based SCADA solution typically required when we need to create complex systems, a SCADA in the cloud, or if we're standardizing on silos of information and creating a multi-site or hierarchical architecture. So let's take a look at how we can map some of the Viva solutions to these common architectures that we see today. One key point with this architecture and what we see on the slide deck is that Aviva solutions are very flexible and it's easily mapped to those common architectures that we see for IoT device to cloud, automation to cloud, and sort of a multi-site discipline as well. As you can see, you can have many devices or assets connect directly to our cloud services through many of our existing systems like Intouch, System Platform, our historians, and basically feed that information up into our cloud-based operations and asset management platforms. Or if I wanted to do commands and controls against the underlying systems down below, we have the concept of the unified operations center. Now this unified operations center could mean many things in many different industries. Like in mining, we talk about it as a remote control center. Um, there's many different messages around there, but Aviva can take you there in terms of the technology. Our key messaging is to have a solution where we can quickly implement and reduce the barriers to getting information that you need right away for your, your daily operations. So once we have a suite of connected data within our environment, what kind of other benefits can we get from utilizing that data? When you take a look at Aviva and sort of the benefits of what we could do, I mean, again, with Aviva, we're vendor agnostic. So our systems integrate to all major tools, technology providers, and incumbent players alike. Again, we're flexible in our architecture. As you've seen within the previous slide deck, we can fit and form our solutions and technologies into any sort of realm that we have or architectures out there. We also can provide uh, context to that data as well. So we can converge data from multiple operations and di different data silos and make sure that they are, uh, any users who are looking at that data can understand it and interact with it quite easily. And again, with this data that we have now, we can be actionable against it. So not only that we show the data within trends or screens or graphics, but what we could do with it within it afterwards, we can leverage it with our analytics portfolio. We can leverage the data with our condition management software, 
the, the possibilities are endless in terms of what we can do. And also, once we have the data within the cloud, when we unify that data source, we can have full visibility of that data and there's no more silos and everybody's working on a single version of that truth. So I talked a little bit about, you know, leveraging our capabilities, but one of the great things that we do once the data is unified within the cloud is using our industrial analytics. Where for analytical capabilities, we can extend Aviva solution so it can easily monitor asset health and performance. Users can receive early warning of equipment issues and leverage AI in the cloud to learn from past data and understand the relationships between sensors, processes, and assets. Our point and click model builder removes the need for complex algorithms and code and our analytical capabilities in Aviva solutions make it possible to easily share preventive maintenance strategies with more people in the organization to enable a single version of that truth. We can deliver our four to five key pillars of our analytics strategy in the following methods. Automated analytics, conditional based rules, guided analytics, and advanced analytics. But I want to cut our conversation short on this topic today because my colleague Omar Ansari will be handling this conversation in a subsequent webinar afterwards. But if you're really interested on these topics and how we can approach these situations at this moment, please reach out to the Canon East team and they can certainly help you out with that story. So we're getting to the final end of things, but I want to quickly recap who Aviva is all about and how we can help you. So Aviva is a world leader in the industrial software space. Our business is founded in our trusted partnerships with leading industrial companies the world over who use our expertise and our products to unify their data and combine it with leading edge analytics so that they can turn opportunities into sustainable business value. With over 50 years of innovation, millions of licenses installed and a leading position in diverse markets and industrial software sectors worldwide, Aviva offers a proven and trusted solution founded on deep industry, in, uh, industry understanding that can help realize tangible benefits quickly for our customers. Together with our ecosystem of 5,000 partners and system integrators, we are proud to help drive their digital transformation and deliver tangible benefits for the world's most complex and innovative industries. So on this chart, you can just see just few of the 1600 companies that Aviva deals with today across a diverse industrial market segment who trust Aviva solutions to transform their assets and operations. And finally, I mean, we're gonna leave it up to a question and answer period, but before I leave it off for the audience to ask questions, I wanna relay another poll here. Alicia, can you help me out with that? So based upon what we've seen today, is this really in alignment to your goals and strategies at your own companies? And are you, looking at unifying your data. Are you putting your data into the cloud? And it looks like people are doing that today. So really interesting. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna kick it off to you, Alicia, but I'd like to say thank you so much for uh, having Aviva present today. And I'm looking forward to our conversations. Thank you, Edward. So if anybody has any questions, you can put them in uh, the Q and A at the bottom of your screen. I'll also share with you guys, uh, as you know, this is a series, so we have more uh, webisodes coming up in the month of May. So I'll share that with you guys too and where you can register. So Lisa, I don't see the, the list of webinars that are coming up yet on the screen, but- uh, Yeah, it's coming, sorry. Sure, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a question. Sure. What would be a step-by-step -step advice for manufacturing company to adopt digital transformation? So when you take a look at the step-by-step -step advice, I would say reach out to your channel partners. In this case, our local channel partner would be one or Canada East. Uh, anybody within the region like Jason Jacobs, Amir, Scott Lamont can help you with your digital journey on building this roadmap out. Now we do have a bunch of different enabling tools to help you test and trial the software packages out there. So within Aviva, we do have services that will allow you to test out connecting your data into the cloud. And we give you a 45 day trial period to utilizing that service. But if you're interested in learning more about the technical details, please reach out to Canada East and it can help you out with that journey.
Okay, we have another one coming in. Oh, we have a few questions. Perfect. Uh, from a strategy point of view, what is the roadmap to success? Oh, he said, guess you just answered that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, and then another question from Ninad over here. When do you advise, uh, sorry, when do you advise on-premise solution and when do you advise uh, for full cloud solution? So it, it, it all depends on sort of the customer requirements and where the customer wants to be within the next five to 10 years, right? So we're starting to see an emergence of customers moving their technologies into the cloud that traditionally we thought weren't possible. So for example, the power and utilities companies are actually moving a lot of systems from their on-premise systems into the cloud. And it's sort of baby steps at the moment, but a lot of them are adopting that technology today. So it's really up to the customer that you're dealing with or you know, your specific company on what their strategy is moving forward. But I'd say, if you're not looking at cloud today, it's it's going to be crazy that you're not going to look at cloud in the future. And, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, there's a lot of security concerns going to the cloud. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue in the future. Actually, it's more, it's probably going to be less secure running your systems on premise than in the cloud. And you take a look at this sort of mindset. Microsoft, Amazon have thousands of cybersecurity experts barring their systems. 365 days a year, 12 hour days, 24 hour days actually, seven days a week monitoring these systems to make sure that your data is safe and secure in the cloud. So it's kind of crazy why we want to look at cloud and using these technologies for, for your operations today. Thanks, Edward. We have another question. How will the cost and licensing work in the future? Any change from today as solutions move towards the cloud? Certainly, I mean, with Aviva, we have a bunch of different commercial offerings in terms of how we handle our cloud-based solutions today. But the most prominent uh, is going to be subscription-based services, right? So with Aviva, we do offer a, a variety of different flexible commercial models available for you today to consume these cloud services. So you can either purchase a multi-year subscription with us or per year subscription. We do have what's called flex credits as well. So you can purchase a set amount of credits and you can utilize any of our product offerings if you want to. So you can have like a buffet basically of picking and choosing which products. But the great thing about the flex program that we have available now today is if you don't think the technology or you're not utilizing the Aviva technology, you can return those credits and use another service that Aviva has to offer. As you probably are aware, Aviva has about 200 different product offerings from engineering to operations, to uh, contract management systems, to APM products, to monitoring and SCADA products. So if you're not satisfied with using one product and you wanna use another product within our portfolio, that flex model allows us to, to do that. Thanks, Edward. And uh, I just want to add, if you want more information on our subscription models, please reach out to us. Or if you know who your account executive is, please reach out to them as well. And they'll be more than happy to answer any subscription questions that you may have. Yes. And they're the experts. So I'm just the technical <laughs> guy and they know the ins and outs of the commercial program. So please reach out to them. Or if you want to reach out to us directly, you know, you can talk to Larry Terry as well. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, we have uh, quite a few questions, so I hope you're ready. Perfect. Uh, are there issues with Canada export controls for security of data and where the, where the data is actually stored? So in terms of uh, data being stored into our services, basically we follow the standard security practices from Microsoft Azure or Amazon for our services. So depending on which product you use, our services may be on Azure or Amazon, depending on where it's at. In terms of uh, data, data sovereignty and data regulation rules, mm -hmm. for us, we host data in all parts of the world, right? So if you, need, if you need to tighten the requirements and you need to say, hey, I need to have my data only in Canada, please reach out to the Canada mm -hmm. East team, which will uh, bring us in as Aviva. And we could talk about those specifics, but long and short, we can work with you in terms of getting that information sorted out. 
Um, okay, Another, uh, so we have a flex question here. Does the flex program allow different types of uses of roles to be allocated? Yes, with the, with the flex program, currently how it works today, we have a plethora of different commercial models uh, available for it. So if you wanna consume the traditional SCADA HMI systems, we have those capabilities as well. But one of the neat things within Flex, if you're using HMI SCADA system is going to be that we do have unlimited models as well. Now, when you take a look at sort of a cloud realm, there is gonna be specific users that you would need to acquire as part of this. So if you wanted to have um, users for our, our engineering portfolio to use our CAD tools or use our 3D drawing tools, there's a specific user and role associated against that. And if you wanna use our, uh, our, our data collection tools, which is Insight to collect data and basically visualize and analyze that data, it's gonna be a specific user or specific offering for that one. The re really neat thing about the Flex is when you actually log on to the Flex portal, you can actually access the website and pick, pick and choose whatever materials that you want. So if you say, hey, I want to have this specific user for this specific software, you can just grab it from the actual site itself. But there's, there's a huge topic about that. And if you wanna know more, just reach out to Canada East team about that. Um, okay, uh, cloud question. For all cloud solution, data latency and redundancy, are these any issues? What is the minimum internet speeds expected or say a minimum of 5, 5G or fiber as last mile? Yes, so we get that question a lot. It's, it's a pretty detailed question for it technically, right? So I, I think and I mentioned in the previous pr presentation point that we can actually accommodate multiple architectures. So we can actually accommodate multiple different communication styles as well. So if I wanted to connect things over slow latency networks like radios or satellite signals or through 3G networks or, any, or anything like that, we can certainly accommodate those architectures and infrastructures. There's actually a technology that's out there right now that really we work with in our solutions called MQTT. And this is basically a messaging protocol that will allow for sort of a, a publish and subscribe sort of method. And this will allow us to really communicate to those low latency networks to basically feed up data into our cloud-based solutions or through to our SCADA-based environments as well. Again, um, what in summary, what I wanted to say is regardless of the underlying network or technology that we're communicating to, we can accommodate that. I have some sort of statistics if you want to reach out to the Canada East team and we can talk into detail on you know, what is the desired result if you talk to these many uh, attributes or, you know, inputs and outputs out in the field there. So uh, definitely reach out to Canada East team. I'd be happy to talk to you about that conversation, but I think for the time that we have, it's going to be very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, looks like that's all the questions we have. Nothing else has come in. Perfect. This has been a wonderful event and I'd like to thank everybody in the audience for joining us today. And hopefully you got something out of these conversations. But again, I'm looking forward to having these one-on-one -on -one conversations, hopefully in person shortly. But uh, Elisa, great event for Canada East and thank you for having us. Well, thank you for taking the time, Edward, and presenting this great presentation to everyone. I hope you all enjoyed it. You will be getting an email tomorrow uh, with the, the on-demand, with a link to watch it on-demand. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone again and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.